I came into my first software engineer job basically knowing nothing. I'd written a few Python scripts, I'd done some data analysis projects, I built some simple web apps. I had taken one programming class in college, and it didn't even cover object-oriented programming. But I became a software engineer, and it was a pretty tough ramp up. I not only had to learn a new programming language because we were working in Go, but I also had to learn how to become a software engineer. And I had to learn the basics of computer science. But it was totally worth it. I definitely could have made things easier on myself though. So here are the five things that I wish I knew before my first software engineering job as a self-taught programmer. Number one, school does not prepare you for the reality of being a software engineer, so you're really not that far behind people that have a computer science degree. At my job, there are three of us that started around the same time that have very different backgrounds. One person had a CS degree, one person came from a boot camp, and then there was me, who knew basically nothing. And I thought I was so behind. And in some ways I was, and in some ways I really wasn't. People who had degrees in computer science were just more familiar with the language of computer science. They had seen things like different algorithms and what they're called. So for example, I had no idea what a bubble sort was. However, once someone explained to me, well, it made sense. I could figure out what it was but there was that gap in terminology. So I spent a lot of time looking things up, but again, it's okay if you don't know the term, as long as you understand the concept behind it. And I just had to ask that question and say, hey, I've never heard about this term before. Can you explain to me what it is? And that's totally okay. I also realized that a lot of people with a CS degree still didn't have experience working in a production environment unless they'd been interns before. There's a difference between using Git on a personal project with just a couple other people and using Git on a large production environment where there are 100 engineers working on the same code. I managed to delete all my code the first time I rebased, so that was fun. Luckily, I'd made a copy of the branch because I knew I'd somehow screwed up. And by the way, the CS person did that as well. There's this amazing website I found from MIT called The Missing Semester of Your CS Education. It covers things like quick command line tools and using debuggers and metaprogramming and even security. My team lead, who has a PhD in computer science, had never used a debugger until he joined the company. So not knowing how to use these tools does not make you stupid. And no matter what your background is, jumping into a new code base is gonna be tough for everyone, even if you have a CS degree or if you're self-taught. And obviously I don't have a four-year degree. So yes, I did know a lot less than the computer science degree people. However, you don't need a four-year degree to be a good programmer. A lot of the concepts that you learn in computer science education are not immediately applicable, especially as a junior engineer. So what I'm saying is just don't get that overwhelmed. Of course you have a lot to learn, but as long as you keep learning, you'll get there. By the way, your software interview skills, especially at big companies like Google, where they have a bunch of brain teasers and stuff like that, don't always transfer to your job as well. Number two, your job as a junior engineer is to ask questions and absorb as much knowledge as you can. Your team lead's job is to train you. You're not annoying people. One of the benefits of being self-taught is I didn't feel like I had to pretend to know a lot of things. I think some new programmers coming from school think they have to come into a new job and know everything, but that's not the case. Your job is to learn. One of the biggest things for you to figure out when you're ramping up is this. What are the things you should learn on your own or that you can figure out? And what are the things you can't possibly know? So you have to ask the question. Maybe there's something you can't possibly know because it's just part of the product. There's other things that are nuances of the programming language that you're using, and our best practices may be different than in other companies. Use your mentors. They've run into these things before and you can ask them questions. A good mentor will let you know if it's something you can figure out on your own and guide you to that next step. And over time, you become better at figuring out the answers to your own questions. Also, you have to learn how long you should bang your head against the wall before asking for help. Of course, when you get stuck, you don't want to immediately go and ask the question. You want to try and figure things out on your own. Some mentors in my company had a hard time limit that said, hey, if you can't figure this out in 30 minutes, come and find me, let's talk it through. I personally learn best by being really hands-on and so I would bang my head against the wall a little longer than that. And that was totally okay. And my team lead knew that I operated that way. I personally had a very good sense of what things I could figure out on my own. And so I knew that if I played around with it longer, then I could figure it out. Sometimes I would spend that time messing around with the code, but sometimes I would pull out my Go textbook and start reading chapters of it to make sure I fully understood what was going on and I fully could understand the question I was gonna ask my mentor. That's just the style that worked for me. And again, my team lead knew I was very autodidactic and that was my way of learning. So he didn't really bother me all that much when I was going through this process. Some people learn better with pair programming and I absolutely despise that. I freeze up and I freak out and I feel like I lose all the knowledge that I had in my head. So you have to be aware of this and understand what it takes for you to learn and ask for that and make sure your environment is set up for you to succeed. Again, know that it's your job to ask for these things and keep asking these questions. Number three, it will take you at least six months to ramp up and be independent. And this applies even if you're a senior engineer. Obviously, if you've coded before, you don't need to learn programming logic, 
but in a lot of companies, you're learning a whole new programming language to just join the company. So you do have that ramp up time and you have to ramp up on the code base. Of course, learning your second, third, fourth programming language is gonna be easier than your first. But again, there's still gonna be a ramp up period. Interfaces are a concept that are specific to Go and even experienced programmers said it took a little bit for them to pick up. Another example is that slices in Go are closer to arrays in a lot of other programming languages. All these things everyone has to learn if they're new to this programming language. Not only that, but you have to learn the code base as well. And coding is not independent from knowing the product and product work. I think some engineers sometimes get a little too far from the product, especially if like me, you're living in the cold, dark dungeon of the backend world. You have to understand how your work will impact the customers. The best programmers and the best salespeople I know truly understand the product and how the customer uses it. So make sure to take time to actually learn the product if you're front end or if you're back end. And besides just the code, there's so many operational details that you have to know. For example, how to test your code, how to deploy your code. Now, some schools may have taught this well and others may have not touched on it at all. Some boot camps teach this as well and some don't. It all really depends. You'll also have to learn to read logs, which are different from debugging. You'll end up learning a lot of other tools. So for example, in my time as I was ramping up as a new software engineer, I had to learn Google Cloud, SQL, Bash scripts, and a ton of custom tools that we had created. All of this helped me be effective at my job, but it's a lot to learn. And you're gonna get frustrated. And honestly, sometimes the best thing you can do is shut off your computer and step away from your code. And I have a confession. I think I cried twice in the first six months of ramping up as a software engineer because I thought I was too stupid to pick it up and I was struggling. But that's normal. Frustration is a normal part of learning how to code. And also remember that code reviews are not personal. If you mess up and you let a bug through, remember that someone else reviewed your code, so it's kind of on them as well. And remember, if there's a bug in production, you can always revert your code and then look at it in a lower stress setting. My CTO once told me, it's not really a real bug until you have to rewrite days of data. And that made me feel a lot better. Number four, take breaks. Coding is tough and sometimes your brain or your eyes are just not feeling it. Especially with work from home now, the line between life and work is kind of blurry. I spent a lot of time beating myself up because I thought I wasn't working as hard as I should, then working longer hours, then getting migraines, and then being down for days with those migraines. And my posture got a lot worse, let me tell you. You need to stay healthy, you need to rest your eyes, you need to get exercise. I ended up buying blue light glasses because I was on the computer so much and I was getting headaches from the eye strain. I also bought a treadmill to make sure I was staying healthy and walked the dog a lot. And the nice thing about being a software engineer is that many companies and managers are totally okay and understand that you need to take these breaks. Coding is very mentally taxing. Sometimes you just can't figure something out and that's okay to step away from the code for a while. For us, it was all about just letting your team know. That meant posting on Slack and telling the team that you'll be away for 30, 40 minutes or taking a walk, whatever it was, and everyone would just know that you wouldn't be responding for a little while. Find out where your policies are and actually use them. Make some friends if you're in the office to take coffee walks with you or, or little breaks that will get you into the fresh air and some green space. I think coffee walks were one of the favorite things that I did back in the office because I got to interact with people outside of my department and even kind of use them as a rubber duck for my programming. I'd just be like, hey, I'm having this issue and try and explain it to something and sometimes I would just figure that out on a walk or we just have fun and catch up. I ended up really investing in keeping myself healthy. I bought some blue light glasses. I bought a little gopher for talking to. He became my rubber duck. Good quality noise canceling headphones. A blanket because I get cold all the time and I would wrap myself up in the office. A good chair. So it doesn't have to be expensive, but it does have to have good ergonomics. A standing desk and a standing mat if you have that to reduce stress on your back and your knees. I actually don't have a standing desk at home right now. So if you have any recommendations, let me know below. Number five. You have to keep learning and you have to build that learning into your schedule. Software engineering is not a one and done learning process. So even if you're not using a new programming language at your job, there's still different frameworks to learn, new tools that are coming out every day. So you have to build that learning in. Learning is one of the most important things about being a software engineer because things change so much. Even if you're not switching programming language, even if you're not moving frameworks, you have to keep learning. I ended up creating a study group at work because I wanted to study computer architecture. It evolved into a group where people who were learning different things could all come together and just get that support and motivation to sit down and study for an hour. The first couple of minutes we'd get on Zoom and catch up and see how everyone was doing and then the next 45 to 50 minutes we'd all study in silence. The cool thing we did at the end though was everyone took two minutes to share what they learned that day. Everyone was more motivated to show up because one, we had a group to study with, and two, you had to actually tell people what you learned at the end so you'd actually study during that time. 
I built this hour into my week to know that at least I would learn something new every week. I also love taking courses. It became something for me to do when I couldn't concentrate on my code or I was stuck on something that I could do and still feel very productive. Sometimes it helps to step away from your code, but you still feel like you could learn something. And that's when I would pull out a book or pull out a course and start learning. Of course, I was kind of thinking in the problem of the back of my mind. And sometimes I'd come out of that study session with a new idea on how to solve it. And don't forget, there's a ton of soft skills that you should learn as well. And you should work on those. Technical writing and documenting your code will help solidify what you've learned. Learning how to do effective code reviews also helps you understand where you have gaps in the code base and your own coding knowledge. Writing good emails and project updates and learning how to communicate with your managers in terms of your career growth will really help you with your success as a software engineer. Just remember one thing. When you're a new software engineer, you are going to be struggling a little bit to ramp up. And that's totally normal, even if you're a senior software engineer. There are different things to learn depending on who you are, what your background is, and what other skills that you have. But remember that everyone is learning every day. What software engineers have to have a really high tolerance for is frustration and making mistakes and dealing with failure. You're always going to have bugs, no matter how good you are with programming, because as you get better, you're going to get more complex projects. And that's great. You're being challenged more every day. The important thing is to stick with it and enjoy the process. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you got some reassurance if you're a self-taught programmer that things are going to be just fine. So hit the like button if you did and subscribe below for more videos on quantum computing, Go and other fun tech stuff.